So here we go, page 39. Today, lots of stuff is happening. Number one, uh, quiz number four is officially due. Throw it in the folder. This was a take-home quiz. It is due right now, not 10 minutes from now, not two hours from now, not tomorrow. It is due, so put it in the folder. Um, also, uh, project number eight is now assigned. So grab a copy of project eight. It will look quite mysterious, but after we do stuff today, project eight will become a lot more manageable. Um, and speaking of quizzes and projects, uh, project eight is the last math project of the semester. We do have a ninth project, but that's just where you reflect on the semester and, and what you've accomplished. So there isn't really math per se in that, in that one. So this is the last math project of the semester. Also, what's that? It counts the same as all the other projects in terms of grades. So it's the easiest hundred you'll get on a project. All right, um, so, 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 so. Okay, uh, quiz number four. Um, so there is quiz five coming up down here, May 18. Um, I was looking at, uh, I, I made a quiz over the weekend for quiz five, and after I made it, I didn't feel like like actually taking it. I was just so tired of like doing calculus stuff. So I've decided this is not gonna count officially. So I'll give it to you on May 18th, but um, but I'm not gonna like collect it and grade it uh, for, for credit purposes. I'll just give it to you for practice, um, but it was, the questions were just so long and I was like, I, you know, I don't want to do this. I can't imagine they're going to want to do it, you know, like two days before the final exam. Yeah. We can, we can talk. Let's talk. Okay. Um, all right. So today we are going to talk about something called power series. Brand new thing today on the bottom of 39. So we're going to skip around a little bit on this page and let's just jump to number four which says, consider this power series, brand new thing for us, power series. We've seen the word series, but the word power in there means that you've actually got variables, right? Normally all of our series are just add up a bunch of numbers forever, but here we are adding a bunch of X's forever. One plus X over five plus X squared over 25 plus X cubed over 125 forever. So it is called a power series. And, um, and in this case, it is a very special kind of series because there is a common multiplier that gets you from one term to the next. What is it in this case? X over five, isn't that what, what you can multiply every term by? So what does that make this series? Geometric. And we know stuff about geometric series with numbers and we're gonna know the same stuff about geometric series with a variable in it. So, um, uh, the formula will have X and some other letter, yeah. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's first do something that maybe we haven't practiced in a while. We're going to write this particular series in closed form, meaning with sigma notation. Turns out this is going to be important for us on the next page. So there's my sigma. My goal is to capture the generic term. So I see x over 5, x squared over 25, x cubed over 125. Can we capture all of that with some generic thing with another letter in it? x over 5 to the n. Buy it. And I'm going to put something in the front here, even though it's not necessary. I'm going to put that, that 1 from the beginning. That's really what everybody's multiplied by. And this guy, Alex suggests, starts at n equals, is it 0 or 1? It's got to be 0 to get that first term, right? 0 up to infinity. There we go. So that's called closed form. And like I said, we haven't done a lot of, do, of that translating, but it turns out we need to in order to advance in this section. Okay, so um, 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 let's, uh, let's list a couple of these guys out. Suppose that I wanted to try plugging x equals 3 into this series. I'm just going to write the first few terms. First term is, uh, yeah, negative 3, thank you. First term is 1. What's the next term when I plug negative 3 in? Is it negative 3 over 5? And then we're plugging negative 3 in again for x. What does it become? Positive or negative? Positive 9 over 25. Everybody see what we're doing here? And the next one, x is negative 3. Negative 27 over 125. And then a plus. Put that on. So that is a, like a full-fledged series on its own, one that we've studied. We've studied things like that before. Is that a convergent or divergent geometric series? It's convergent because the magic ratio in this case, what is it? Not quite three over five, but 
negative 3 over 5 is the magic ratio here. And negative 3 over 5 in absolute value is smaller than the magic number, which is 1 for geometric series. So this guy converges because in this case, the okay, so I think um, we've been using x for the magic ratio, but I can't use x on this problem because there's another x. So the magic ratio is negative 3 fifths. And if we take the absolute value of that guy, it's definitely less than 1. So this particular geometric series converges. But just as well, we could take a look at part D, which involves plugging x equals 6 in for all of those x's. Let's write out the first few terms. First term, 1 plus, next term, 6 over 5 plus, the next one, 36 over 25, one more, 16 over 125 plus, dot, dot, dot. In this case, what is the magic ratio? 6 over 5, right? We'll get you from 1. It's always x over 5 for this one, right? So whatever x is, it's that over 5. So the ratio here is 6 fifths. And absolute value of this guy is bigger than our magic number of 1. So therefore, this green series diverges. And so this brand new creature, this power series with all the X's in it, is really just an infinite collection of series that maybe we can analyze individually, right? When X is negative 3, the series converge. When X was 6, the series diverge. And there's a whole infinite number of numbers you could plug in for X, and every one of them just gives you a brand new geometric series, right? So power series is just a way to kind of generalize, to capture a whole family of these kinds of series of numbers that we are familiar with. Can you tell me what is the biggest value of x that's going to make this guy converge? Something less than 5, right? Because if you plug 5 in, you know that uh, the magic ratio in this case we said was x over 5. And if you plug 5 in, that's a 1. And if it's a 1, the geometric series diverges. But anything a little less than 1 converges. So like 4.999 would be fine. And how about on the small side? What's the smallest? something a little bigger than negative 5, right? And so we've got all these numbers between minus 5 and 5 that if you plug any of them in, then the series will converge. For example, negative 3 is inside of this interval, minus 5 to 5, and that's the convergent interval. But we tried plugging in x equals 6, which was outside of this interval, and the thing diverged there, right? Okay, so I think we just answered number 6 here says, for what values of x will this series converge? So we said that the two magic numbers here were negative 5 and 5. Equal to on either one? Not on either one. OK, so that right there is the answer to number 6. We'll write it out in a little bit more detail over here. Um, we know that we want the magic ratio in absolute value to be less than what number for geometric? 1. And that means that x over 5 without absolute value is trapped between what two numbers? Between 1 and negative 1, right? Absolute value less than 1 means we're trapped between minus 1 and 1. And then you can multiply everything here by what to solve for x? By 5. And that's the answer, right? So just think, I mean, we could just kind of feel this one. But there's a process, an algebraic process you could follow as well. And we'll do that a bunch today. So number seven says your answer to the previous question, the question of where will this series converge, is called the domain of the power series. And more commonly, it's actually called the interval of convergence, IOC, interval of convergence. You pick any x in that interval, and the series converges. If you pick x is not in the interval, the series diverges. All right, a uh, quick look at a, a geometer sketch pad thing here. Um, you can. So, so what does it look like if you graph this thing forever? And what does it mean to say that the domain is only from minus 5 to 5? So here we go. Um, we can graph, um, yeah, w w what does it converge to? All right, so let's, let's see what it converges to. We can say that. 
Okay, uh, what's our magic geometric series sum formula? A over one minus X, right? Sum was A over one minus, but I'm gonna call it not X because we already have X. A in this case, first term, one over one minus the ratio, X over five. That's what it converges to. So we can multiply everything by five if we wanted to clean this up a little bit. I think it's that. 5 over 5 minus x. It's a graph. It's got a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. Doesn't seem like anything funny happens at negative 5, so let's take a look at our picture here. Okay, so if we just graph y equals 1, we get this horizontal line. If we graph the first two terms, y equals 1 plus x over 5, that's going to be a diagonal uh, uphill line, right? It's that one. If we graph the first three terms, what's the name of the graph? That's a quadratic, so the graph is a parabola. We could graph four, four, ter four terms, that's a cubic thing. I'm gonna start hiding some of these guys, but all I'm doing here is just graphing one more term. So we get all these polynomials, right? That right there, I'm gonna hide a lot of this stuff here, but you can see that they're kind of honing in on something, right? Like they're, they're approaching something. So I'm gonna hide a lot of these guys here and just show you the final answer. So this is the sum of, I don't know, the first 10 terms or however many buttons I have up here. This is the actual sum that we just calculated, one over one minus x over five. And you can see that this polynomial curve, the light one, is pretty darn close to the thick one from where to where? From minus five to five. But this guy right here isn't anywhere close to this thing bigger than five, and it's not anywhere close less than five. It's kind of strange, like it hugs it really, really well, but then all of a sudden at negative five, it just completely abandons the curve it's trying to hug, right? So that's what it means to say the domain is this. It means you can plug, like you could plug x equals six into this, but it doesn't give you any anything meaningful for that series. Series diverged at x equals six. Okay, so let's look at the next page. Another power series. x minus two minus x minus two squared over four plus x minus two cubed over nine minus etc. cetera. Is this a geometric series? Can you multiply by the same something over and over and over again? And the answer is no. It's the numbers in the bottom that are the problem. The tops we could we could deal with, but you can't get from four to nine to sixteen by multiplying by the same number every time. So, a what on the bottom? I'm going to put an n squared on the bottom. Good plan. And what we have to do, even though it's not geometric, we're, we're about to have a technique to solve it, but it involves writing it in this closed form before we can figure out what's going on. Okay, so n squareds are the bottoms, right? Those are perfect squares. Uh, upstairs, looks like x minus two to a power. I'm, I'm just gonna put n up there and see if it's right. So what we're looking for is a relationship between the thing on the bottom and the power. Is the power, squared what's on the bottom yeah so that seems okay right three squared becomes the nine four squared becomes a 16 it's not so uncommon to have to do like a minus one or plus one you just put n and then and then tweak it if you need to okay so that's fine what's the only other uh piece that we need to account for this is alternating business right so our very common technique for alternating let me give myself a little more space here is to put a minus one to the n. Okay. Let's put our starting and ending numbers here. Starting number, it's a zero, it's a one. Yeah, it's undefined at zero, so that's kind of a problem, but you can tell by looking at the very first power, first power is a one, right? So n equals one has to be the thing that we start with. We'll fix that. Upstairs, that's infinity. And then the last thing, yeah, the negative one to the n is gonna make it alternate, but we gotta make sure it actually starts with a uh, positive in this case, which is what I want. And if you plug n equals one in here, what do you get for this guy? Negative one, which is not what I was supposed to be, it's supposed to be positive there. So how do we fix this? Make it plus one, make it minus one, you just have to jog it off by one. 
I'll say plus one. Plus three also works. Okay, so that's the closed form. And like I said, we're going to need that for this process where you have a big blank space on your paper right now. So that's the first step. And I just want to highlight that coming up with uh, the formula here sometimes involves just a miracle like n squared. I, I don't know who shouted it out, but uh, if you don't recognize that 4, 9, and 16 are perfect squares, you're in trouble. And there are other patterns going on here too that aren't going to help you. For example, what do you have to add to 1 to get to 4? So that's a plus 3 from 4 to 9. That's plus 5 from 9 to 7. It's plus 7. There is a definite odd numbered power uh, pattern, odd numbered pattern happening down at the bottom, but it doesn't help you in terms of writing the formula in closed form, right? So we just got to recognize, oh, maybe it's these yellow perfect squares. Maybe it's the blue perfect cubes, right? Maybe it's, uh, those are the powers of two, sorry, green perfect cubes. But you got to somehow recognize what it is by itself. Okay, so here's the heart of today's class right here. It says we're going to use the ratio test. We're going to try to figure out where this thing converges what values of x does this thing converge? And I see an n, which is a power. And that power was one of the telltale things that said, hey, maybe the ratio test is useful to you. So we're going to do the ratio test on every one of these power series uh, to determine the interval of convergence. So let's give it a shot. Uh, I'm going to call, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to say uh, limit as n goes to infinity. Anybody remember the magic ratio for the ratio test? Is a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. That was the formula for the ratio test. So downstairs is where I always begin, because downstairs is the a sub n, which is just the term itself in the series. So I'm just going to copy all of that as it is. We've got that. And then upstairs is supposed to be a sub n plus 1, which means we're going to copy the same formula we just wrote, but all of the n's become n plus 1's. And so this is going to be a negative 1 to the n plus 1 plus 1. See that? It's n plus 2. And then x minus 2 to what power? n plus 1, and then divided by n plus 1 squared. Definitely not n squared plus 1. It's all the n's become n plus 1's. Okay, there's one last important piece of the ratio that we are missing at the moment. It's absolute value. That's part of the definition of the ratio test. Most of the tests that we use the ratio test on, sorry, most of the series that we use the ratio test on were all positive numbers anyway. So we, we didn't really pay much attention to the absolute value, but it's imperative that we have it here. You'll see why. Yeah, okay, so then lots of good things happen. So uh, negative 1 to the n plus 2, negative 1 to the n plus 1, who cares? It's absolute value. It just becomes 1. Uh, so this becomes a limit as n goes to infinity. And now I'm going to keep my absolute value, and I'm just going to play that game where we flip over the bottom guy. So upstairs, I have this x minus 2 to the n plus 1. Downstairs is the n plus 1 squared. And then we flip over the guy on the bottom. So upstairs goes... And then downstairs is that x minus 2 to the n. <clears throat> Equals. Notice what are we writing every time at the start? That limit. We've got to have that limit. Okay, now we're going to carefully cancel some things out. So what cancels up here? Not quite. X minus 2 on top, right? Because you have n plus 1 of them and only n of them downstairs. So all cancel except for one left over on top. So upstairs, x minus 2, and then I'm going to copy everything else. There's an n squared. 
and there's an n plus one square. Okay, now it's time to wave our hands when we get to this limit here. I have n squared on the top. I have an n plus one squared on the bottom. Imagine distributing that, but don't actually do it. What's the highest power downstairs? It's two. So n squared on top, n squared plus stuff we don't care about on the bottom. What is that limit? It is one. X minus two does not contain the letter n. So it is a constant as far as that limit is concerned. So I'm just copying it. Just like taking a constant multiple outside. Yeah, if it were 7n squared over n squared, the limit would be 7, and then the x part is just getting copied down. We okay with that step right there? For the limit, the variable's n. Anything that isn't n is fixed. And constant multiples get copied down. Okay, so we've got our uh, one time, so I'll just write this as absolute value of x minus 2. Super. The ratio test always compares this limit to what magic number? To 1. And in order for the series to converge, do we want this ratio to be more or less than one? We want it to be less than one. What about equal to one? What happens if the magic ratio is equal to one? And the test was inconclusive. So we're gonna force it to be the convergent piece and then we'll figure out what's happening at the equals one side of things. Okay, but look, absolute value is something less than one. That translates without absolute value to say that x minus two is trapped between what two numbers? Negative one and one, right? You have some stuff that is smaller than one. It's trapped between minus one and one. And then we solve for x by adding two to all three of these things. So we go one less than x less than three. Questions on that? Uh, one and a half works, yeah. Because it's between one and three. Yeah. The series is going to converge for any x that you pick between one and three. Now, this is a pretty mechanical process, and you'll have lots of practice with it today and in the homework. And this is what the project is all about, is essentially doing this four or five times. Um, but I just want to point out that we have just found that a whole bunch of series converge. Normally, we do a bunch of work and you get one series that converges or diverges. But we just found infinitely many series that converge. For example, if x equals 1 and a half, does it converge or diverge? Converges. How about 1.732? Converges. How about 3.01? Diverges. You just answered infinitely many convergent, divergent questions in one fell swoop, which is pretty cool. Okay, so what about at x equals 3? If you plug 3 in right here, what do you get? You get 1. And if the ratio is equal to 1, the ratio test is inconclusive. That doesn't mean it diverges at 1. It means the ratio test doesn't help you. What if you plug x equals 1 in there? Absolute value, again, gives you 1. And so this is very common. At the end points, you're going to get 1 which means the ratio, ratio test didn't work, which means you have to just do something else, something completely different. So, hold on one second. Elia? If you go too far below one, like negative 17 is negative 19, but then you take absolute value and it becomes positive 19, All right? So you can't go too low. Yes, so here's what we're doing. Uh, using the ratio test is very common for power series. You're going to do it a bunch in the activity and the project and the homework. And then also we're going to test the endpoints separately, which is also very common for power series because the endpoints are always the dreaded, oh, shoot, the ratio is one, so the test was inconclusive. So let's check the endpoints separately. All right, here we go. Endpoints. Okay, let's start with x equals 3. 
we'll also do x equals 1. So we are plugging x equals 3 in to our blue rewritten series here. Or if you prefer, you can you can plug it into the top guy, but I'm going to go to the, the blue guy. So when x equals 3, how much is in the parentheses? 1. And then 1 raised to any power is 1. So this thing right here just becomes 1 over n squared with that negative 1 in the front. So I'm just going to copy that. Yeah, let's see here. So uh, what do we get here? Summation, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times 1 over n squared. Yeah? And that's just a brand new series. You're starting from scratch. You can't use the ratio test. You need another one. What test could we use on this guy? Uh, it is not a P series because that negative one. You can use the alternating series test, right? Because it alternates. And that's a different test. So we're, we, you have a bunch of options on this one. Alternating series test. Yes, it's alternating. And uh, the, the terms are tending to zero and the terms are decreasing. So the alternating series test says that this series converges. So I'm going to say uh, lots of details will eventually get you alternating series test says that the series converges. One over n to the x. It sounds like you're, you're describing the P series. Yeah. No. Yeah. So it doesn't sound like all you did. All you did is change the letter, right, from P to X. Yeah. Game. Or the absolute convergence test. Gabe, can you tell us about that one? So don't copy this, but absolute value around the whole thing, yes? That is a P series when we have absolute value. That's exactly the alternate, the absolute convergence test. Yes? We have choices. Um, yeah, I think that's good. Okay, so we converge at x equals 3. Let's try the other end point. The other one is what? x equals 1. Okay, so we're plugging 1 in for um, the x. I'm again, I'm going to the blue. You're welcome to go to the top. So if I plug 1 in for x, how much is in the parentheses? It's negative 1. So it's negative 1 to the n. I'm just going to do this calculation here on the side. So I've got negative 1 to the n plus 1. That was there. I've got an n squared at the bottom, but then the top just became negative 1 to the n. Alex says it's always subtracting. And by that, these two things, one of them is positive 1 and one of them is negative 1 every time. So the whole thing is going to be negative, yes? Okay. So it might still converge, but we're just trying to recognize what is that thing and how can we attack it. So that that is what that this guy is. Yeah, you add the exponents. Uh, okay, so this becomes uh, negative 1 to the n plus 1 times negative 1 to the n over n squared. That's what we wrote up at the top. And we recognize that's really just negative 1 over n squared. All negative. Does that series converge or diverge? Converges by. That is a P series with the negative 1 multiplied through. Yes, we haven't really talked about some of the nice algebra rules of summations, but that's one of them, that you can pull a constant multiple out front. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is a convergent E-series. And I'll just put the word details here. Write more than we have written when it comes to doing the project and the tests. That's right, and that's how almost all of our power series are going to go. You use the ratio test for almost everything, but then two completely separate tests for the endpoints. And so then finally, the interval of convergence here, 
Uh, I'm going to put the one that we had originally, which was one to three, excluding both. What's going on at three? Converges. So all of a sudden, three is in the interval of convergence. At one, also converges. Notice that there are four different possibilities. That's one of them, where it converged at both endpoints. It could have diverged at both endpoints. It could have converged at one and diverged at the other. There's no prediction. You just have to go through the details. Yeah, you, you, you put equals or not. Well, there's only one right answer, but it could be any combination of equals or not. Uh, it will almost always be the two answers. Yeah. Okay, uh, just a little bit more and then you'll do the activity. Uh, it says in both of these cases, the interval of convergence is centered at a number which is A. All right, so this is something we skipped way back when, but on the previous page, the very first problem here says, here's the general definition of a power series. It's X minus A, X minus A, X minus A all the time. And then the C's are just constants. So how much is the A for this problem in number four? It's supposed to be X minus a number every time. Zero. So the A is zero there. What was the center of this interval? Zero. Okay. How about that? How much is the A in number eight? It's two, right? X minus A. What is the center of our interval? Two. It's always centered at whatever that magical A is. So if we know what the center is, then we can also talk about how far it is from the center to the ends. In this case, the center is two. How far is it to get to either end is one. And so we now imagine a dot at two, and then you can go one in either direction. How about we call this the radius? It's not a circle, but it's, you know, it's the same idea. It's just how far from the center. So the radius of convergence, which we're going to call capital R, is just how far from the center to the endpoints. So um, in this example, I'll just remind us what the answer was. So what's the radius of convergence from the middle to the end is five. So R is equal to five in that case. And this one we decided it was uh, one less than or equal to X, less than or equal to three. And the radius here, one. Yeah, it's half of the whole thing. Uh, the radius only becomes apparent after you do all the crazy work of the limit. Yeah. Uh, like if this had been a seven, like uh, Alex had said, what if it was a seven? Then all of a sudden um, we end up with a one seventh over here and the radius is one seventh. So there, you got to do work to find the radius. Okay. So last thing. Yeah, center is obvious from just looking at the original series. Okay, three possibilities here uh, for any power series centered at x equals a. Um, let's jump down to part c, which is the common one. The radius r is finite and greater than zero. Uh, in this case, the interval of convergence is uh, all the numbers. Let's see. So the center is a. So we're going to go a minus the radius up to a plus the radius. By that. This is now interval notation. Should I go back? I could also write it like this. So this, it depends on the series. It, it, it could be less than or equal to on either or both. Parentheses exclude, but I'm not saying anything specific here. I'm just saying there's the interval. You have to test the endpoint separately. But then there are two special cases. It could be that the series only converges at the center number. In this case, how far would you say the radius is? Zero, right? If you can't move at all, then the radius is zero, and the interval of convergence is just a single number A, right? There's no interval at all. Uh, curly brackets is just our fancy way of listing. Yeah. Um, but then there's the other kind of series, the other special case, where the series converges for all real numbers. It couldn't be any nicer than that. What would you say is the radius in that case? Infinity, right? How far can you go? You can go infinity. Half of infinity is also infinity. And the interval of convergence 
if you can go forever, is everything, right? Minus infinity to infinity, right? All reals I will accept. Like in uh, complex numbers? No, you gotta take a complex course. It's not this one. All right, those are the three possibilities. Nothing else can happen with power series. Uh, I, I don't really have a good thing to put there. It's just whatever, it's just what some number. Okay, so activity starts here. Each of these takes some time. First step, write the thing in closed form. Whatever the radius is, R.